for you. just like every single one of you. 
there's nothing special about me except that I am learning and have learned. But in actuality, we are all extremely special in our own way. We all have gifts to share with the world. So what am I? Today, I am no longer that little girl. I am a black status presenter, a leader, a coach, to some, but mostly to myself. And I don't say this in vain or to boast, but instead in pride and praise that I am living up to what is in me. I am here to tell you that if I can be here and do it, every single one of you sitting in this room can do it too. Initially, I had no belief in myself. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what the status levels or colors were even. I just loved the mascara. And I didn't even for one second look towards black. But I surprised myself by being in the moment and simply enjoying it. I immersed myself in the passion and excitement and love for Unique and the products. But mostly, the brave and empowered community of women who showed me what was possible and available to me. And this became my new breath every day. Now when my inner voice asks me, who are you to do this? I now look at this image and read and reread this quote by this most incredible woman who, by the way, inspires the pants off me, <laughs> Shelaine Maxfield, which is such a fantastic and necessary reminder for us all. And I say, why not me? And who is going to stop me but me? Unique came into my life empowered me and gave me so much. For me, it's been so much more than the financial gift. It's truly the life change, the strength, the courage, the bravery, the worth, and the giving back of a second chance. We all have our stories, as you've heard up here today so far. Our very own story of who we are and how we got here. And what drives us to stay? What is your why? What is your story? It's important to really know and own your own story. Author Brene Brown, and I love how we've all brought up Brene Brown, and I've talked about her a lot in this, in this presentation. I don't think there's anything braver than sharing our story. Owning our stories and loving ourselves through the process is so beautiful, and it is one of the very bravest things you can do. So share your stories. It can be relatable to so many others. It's important in your unique journey, and it allows for people to open up and connect with you. It opens doors, it creates community, and yeah, it's scary. But if you can allow yourself to be vulnerable, and there's that word again, another common thread, I know you will and can change lives. So today I am here, and again, so very honored to share with you some of what I have learned along the way. Take some of it, leave some of it, share some of it, but my hope and prayer for you is that you walk away today with some new explorations, experiences, and ideas that may resonate with you and allow you to make some changes in your lives for the betterment of you and your businesses and your hearts and your souls. One of the questions I get the most is how can we or can we begin to believe in ourselves? How do we build up that self-confidence? And I'm here to tell you I don't have all the answers yet, and thank goodness for that because I know there's, we're all a work in progress. Um, and I'm quite sure many of you have a lot you could add to this list. But here's what I learned in my journey so far, the seven of what I consider to be the most valuable steps in getting there. And I'm sure you can guess at number one, you have to believe. Believe that you can, and you are halfway there, baby. Don't wait for it to come, or for the time to be right, or for someone to say they believe in you or for someone, or for you to know everything, or to be trained in everything, or have just the right number of party bookings, or the right hostess, or the perfect videos. To succeed in business, heck, to succeed in anything in life, you have to have unwavering, insatiable, tenacious belief in yourself. I'm a huge believer and advocate of you are what you believe yourself to be. 
So just believe and then do what that takes and watch yourself rise to it. What we focus on expands. The other day I was watching Joel Osteen on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. And he was sharing about his latest book, The Power of I Am. And it was such a great reminder that we do absolutely become what we tell ourselves, and it's very much what Tina was talking about. What are you telling yourself every day? What are you listening to? If you are waking up in the morning and saying, I am just not cut out for this. I am just not beautiful enough. I am not creative. I am not smart enough. Then guess what? That is what you're going to rise to. Your inner self starts to absorb that on some sort of molecular level, which is really unhealthy long term. And as I was saying that to you, it didn't feel so good in here. It felt yucky and uncomfortable. But what if, what if instead you woke up and you walked into that bathroom and you looked at yourself in that mirror and said, I am amazing today. I am a giving person. I am magnificent. I am made to share my gifts. I am beautiful and I am powerful. Gosh, I, like, I feel that, like that creates a shift right here energetically. And it changes things inside of you. You will suddenly then feel yourself rising to it. What do you really have to lose by trying this? Nothing. And you have everything to gain. I believe that you all are so great. Regardless of what has happened to you in the past, do not believe your past. The past doesn't make you who you are today, but your past has prepared you for today, for right now. If you begin to think properly that there is something that is within you, a power that is greater than anything in the world, it will guide you, it will protect you, it will direct you, it will let you shine your light, if you let it. That I do know for sure. Time to be vulnerable. Here I am. <laughs> we must dare greatly. In Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly, which I strongly suggest everyone reads, and Tina has a copy of it, so if you want to look at it, you can. She starts off her book with this quote by Theodore Roosevelt. And some of you may have heard it before, but I wanted to read it to you because it so strongly applies here to us and to our business and our lives. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out the strong, how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. Vulnerability is not a weakness. It sounds like truth, and it feels like courage. I think this is probably the hardest one for all of us to do as human beings. But vulnerability is doing it anyway, and letting go what other people think of you, or what their expectation of what they think you should be, or do, or know. It is okay to not know everything. It's okay to not be a professional in makeup, or direct sales. I never sold a thing in my life prior to this. It's okay to say, I don't know that answer, but let me find out for you. Or to say, I don't really have a whole lot of experience in this, but it makes me feel so alive and excited to help women feel amazing and uplifted about themselves. So just own it. Own it like a champ. Fake it till you make it, unapologetically, and do it with your own character and charm that is so delightfully you, because you are unique and we are all a gift. You are a masterpiece and a work in progress all at once. And there is power and beauty and authenticity and vulnerability in that. So embrace it and use it to your advantage. But here's the biggest and most beautiful gift that comes from that. It offers <coughs> others the freedom and the space to do the very same thing. And when you set an intention always to do everything from love and a desire to make a change, 
or offer a chance to make a change in someone else's life, you simply cannot go wrong. So the next time in your makeup application videos or your lash bashes, let go of that need to be perfect and just have fun with it. Just let your own self shine through, perfect imperfections and all. When we spend our lives waiting for the very right moment, we actually end up sacrificing opportunities and toss away the gifts that we have been given and end up turning our backs on those amazing and valuable moments where our unique contribu contributions were meant to be. And by doing so, they may be lost forever. So please don't miss out on the opportunities that the universe has set up for you. Open the door and walk through courage with bravery. Self-care, we need some radical self-love in our lives through some self-care. Is your cup running on empty? This part is about self-nurturing, self-care, self-love. And in order to build self-esteem and self-confidence, you need, you absolutely must practice self-love. So often, a lack of self-confidence starts with how we feel about ourselves. We need to make time for us. For most of us, we put ourselves last on the daily list of things to do. It wasn't until my Unified well over a year ago that I was made to see and believe and encouraged to practice this for myself. So now, I infuse my day with a little magic just for me. And this is not a luxury, although I did feel like that in the beginning. It is an absolute necessity. No guilt is allowed here. Throw that out the window. You deserve it. We can really only give so much of ourselves to our business, our customers, our team, our children, our families, until we become depleted. So yes, give. It is true that we rise by lifting others. We are all created to give. But then also always allow yourself to receive so you can fill back up. Think of it as a self-love bank account. If you are giving and doing and being for others, you have to make deposits back in every single day. So how do we do this? How do we figure that out? Make a list. How do you want to feel? And then base it off of that. Some of us, at the end of the day, want to feel comforted or warm or relaxed or inspired or creative or pampered or refreshed. So you might like to paint, knit, take a bubble bath, meditate, sit in prayer, take a long walk in nature, put on your favorite music and blast it through your house and dance, or my personal favorite is <laughs> the basket of books there. Um, I love to read. I love to read personal development books. Um, or get the app Audible and have someone read to you. It's so soothing, and, and you're learning, you're growing your, um, your toolbox for your business, for coaching. Start with just 15 minutes a day if that's all you can do, but promise me you will gradually increase this. And then this one is huge. Promise me this. Be utterly impeccable with your word to yourself. Make yourself a promise and keep it, and that proves to yourself how very worth it you are. Because it feels good to be true to ourselves, yet most of us end up pushing good feelings away. Why? It all boils down again to the feeling of unworthiness. Because we're always so very focused on pleasing others instead of ourselves. Because we want to be loved. Because we are trying sometimes to win at someone else's reward system. Because we're operating on the idea that what other people think of us actually matters to our well-being. It feels vulnerable to feel good. And we fear that it won't last. Let's shake those beliefs. Let's shake those age-old messages and those lies that we tell ourselves. Love and acceptance begins with you. There is nothing outside of you that can make you feel that. Validate yourself. Congratulate and celebrate yourself when you do well at something. Don't wait for others <coughs> or expect approval or validation. This is so empowering, and this is what builds your confidence in future success, being able to do for you, simply because. Not for the external attention, or the accolades, or the external validation. <coughs> Step four, setting boundaries. Balance and boundaries. This leads us right into boundaries, because setting boundaries for ourselves is also another act of self-love and self-care. This is a big toughie for me as a chronic people pleaser and peacekeeper. I have a really hard time with boundaries. Boundaries sometimes makes me feel mean, or like I don't care, or like I'm about to disappoint people. 
And that's a tough thing for me to live with. But again, it comes right back down to believing in myself and loving myself first. I think this is a hard one for many of us, most especially leaders, because we want to be available to all. But we also need to find time to work on our own businesses first. And without clear and described boundaries, the lines get blurred, and soon our cup is yet once again running on empty. But yes, stating and sticking to your boundaries, it can be really difficult and uncomfortable at times. And I love how Brene Brown kind of describes it in her book, Daring Greatly. I have a little boundary mantra now that's choose discomfort over resentment. In those moments that sometimes it's uncomfortable to say, no, I can't, or I'm sorry, I'm just not available right now. It feels uncomfortable, but it's so much better to choose to be uncomfortable in a moment than feeling complete resentment and judgment forever. We can be generous with our time, but we also need to be very intentional. By being super intentional and super authentic regarding who you choose to spend your valuable time with, be around positive and inspiring people and put yourself into places and situations that lift you up and inspire you and don't drain your energy. Your energy is a very precious resource. Know what builds you up, know what tears you down, and feel free to honor that. And lastly, there's balance in running your own race. Stay in your own lane. Yes, you can look left and right for inspiration, but then go at it at your own pace and on your very own track. Please stop comparing yourself to your neighbor or your wife sister. Recognize that comparing yourself to anyone is a losing game for you. The answer is to get super duper comfortable in your very own skin. And the more you practice radical self-love, and the more you become totally impeccable with your word to yourself, and the more you stand up for boundaries with grace, more worthy you begin to feel. <coughs> and then comes the confidence and the belief and bye-bye comparisons. Focus on your path and your journey. We are all on our own timelines and with our own contracts. Respect and honor that. And allow yourself to be happy and celebrate other successes and know that your time is coming. There is power and grace and honor in saying no sometimes. You can have a personal balanced, healthy life and also be an out freaking, standing, amazing entrepreneur. <laughs> Core desires and goals. Here we go. We're going to check in with our feelings again, but it allows us greater clarity. How do you want to feel in your business and how do you want to make others feel? Decide on what you want. Your dreams plus your desires equal your goals. Look in the mirror, state some beliefs, recall your successes, give voice and massive kudos to what is working in your life right now. Pour on the desire, muster all your courage, and then state your intention. Boom, baby, you just got your goals. Setting goals this way feels different. It takes some mindset adjusting. You are worthy of your desires, your wants. It's not entitlement. I know many of us struggle with it looking like entitlement. Healthy entitlement looks and feels like this. It is rooted in self-worth and love, and we are all entitled to those things. The belief and knowledge that there is enough to go around. If you don't fully believe that you are worthy of having desires and goals and your dreams fulfilled, then there will never be enough space for your true self to show up. Set goals based on how you want to feel, and they may look something like this, or they may look completely <coughs> nothing like this, and everything is okay. We often come up with our to-do lists, our goals, based on externals. What we want to achieve, earn, accomplish, get, buy, or look like. These are mostly all experiences outside of ourselves and as end results. But when that goal is met and the result is the end, then what? What if we got really clear on and created a list of how we actually wanted to feel? 
doing what we will do, and then redesign our to-do lists, set our goals, and create our dream boards based on this. Here's how we can approach that. Number one, know your meaningful why behind it. Why are you doing what you are doing? Get really, really clear on this. No answer is wrong. Number two, become acutely aware of that hunger. What are you craving that your accomplishments will feed? And again, your answer to this will return back to the, your core desired feelings. And you will gain wisdom, strength, belief, and it will make you feel empowered to lift others. Are you ready than ever to feel that freedom, both financially and emotionally? Come back to these powerful feelings to reestablish that fire in your belly. And then number three, get super clear on what it will take to pull it off. Be realistic, but think big. Bigger than ever before. Break through the box, test your limits, fail on occasion, then learn from it and pick yourself back up. Setups are only, setbacks are only setups for your comeback. And then, listen to this really closely, because this is key. And Rob talked about this a tiny bit as well. Then, let go of expectations. Let go of the outcome. Solely focus on the doing, the journey, the lessons along the way, not on the results. Once we can let go of and release the grip on what we want the future to hold, we end up becoming incredibly present and way more in tune to what we are doing and being. In other words, want it with all your heart, but don't be attached to getting it. Soak everything up in the road you are to get there. It becomes more about the process and less about the outcome. Of course, we have to talk about fear. Fear less. Fear is our ever-powerful teacher and inspirer. Fear, by definition, is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. And pleasant doesn't always quite cover it. It's more like horrific, gut-wrenching, crippling at times. I know, I know we've all felt this. And to be super honest, and I know you know this already, and well vulnerable, um, yeah, I was shaking in my boots to come up here today on my cast. Um, and to speak in front of all of you, but am I in danger? Am I being threatened? Am I being harmed? No, of course not. And I knew that I would settle in and be okay once I got through the initial feelings and worry of messing up. And maybe failing, or yeah, not me me measuring up to expectations. But whose expectations? Mostly my own. It goes back to being vulnerable and just completely letting go of what others will think of me. We have to decide to just believe, to just do it, and to realize and allow our vulnerability to shine through, and that by doing so, we may inspire just one other person. And to me, that is worth every second. When we are being truly authentic and genuine, it ends up not being about us. It's more about what we can share and offer to help others and to give back. The same thing in our business, when we offer the opportunities to ones we love or friends who we know would be amazing at it. It's not about us, it's about them. And not offering <coughs> such a changing opportunity just because we are scared would be such a disservice. Also because I know that the very thing that I fear the most is the very thing that I usually have to do the most. Sometimes we just gotta answer the call. We all have a plan and a path that is laid out for us. And if we can just be ready and show up, there's gonna be massive growth in that for you. Eleanor Roosevelt said, you gain strength, courage, confidence by every experience in which you really stop and look fear in the face. You must do the very thing that you think you cannot do. You have to just decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. And then simply show up with your gifts and it will all happen exactly as it is meant to. Gratitude and gratitude. Gratitude is pra practicing. Gratitude brings more of what is already good in your life, but it, it's also for what is to come. 
Meet it halfway and say thank you. Gratitude illuminates positive feelings, and like attracts like always. It is a practice. You build it like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it grows, and the power you have to use it on your behalf becomes greater and greater. To be grateful is to find blessings in everything. I practice gratitude with my team as a team because gratitude is contagious. Assign a gratitude of the week, a gratitude day of the week on your team page. It will also change the energy and tone. If you've got any kind of negativity going on, practice gratitude and watch that page, that energy change dramatically. Gratitude uplifts and it puts everything into perspective. In my personal life, sometimes I catch myself saying upwards of almost 100 little thank yous a day for silly little things like parking space opening up or a good cup of coffee or a wonderful meetup with a friend. And I notice that by doing so, more things tend to go my way and run more smoothly in my day. How's your attitude? Check in with yourselves. We are the directors of our own mindset. How are you currently viewing and handling challenges and bumps in the road? We may not be able to stop or control factors in life and a business, but we can change how we perceive and react to them. Train your mind to look for the positive in every situation, forever seeking the silver linings. This is not a unicorns and cupcakes and rainbow ignorance is kind of bliss state, but more of a true seeing the problem kind of reality and focusing on the solution rather than the problem. Where focus goes, energy flows. And where energy flows, whatever you're focusing on grows. In other words, your life and business is controlled by what you are focusing on. That is why we must choose to focus on where we want to go, not what we fear or what is lacking or what is wrong. There will always be those things in any business and in life. So the next time you find yourself challenged or in a state of uncertainty, resist your fear and your doubt. Shift your focus toward where you want to go and your actions will naturally take you there. In closing, I would like to read this letter to you. Dear, striving, <coughs> brave, courageous girl, sometimes <coughs> we just have to jump. We can make a million excuses for why we aren't ready, why it isn't the right time, why we aren't up to the challenge, my arms why we don't have what it takes. But really, all we need to do is take the very first step, the first leap, and then just keep going. You know it's time. You know where you want to be, and even where you are meant to be. But you are the <laughs> only one holding yourself back from taking the first step toward that place. Don't hold yourself back anymore. Take the leap. Trust. Believe. Have faith. And if it doesn't turn out quite like you had hoped or wished for, then adjust your sails and try again. But chances are, you will wonder why you waited so long. 